Hello everyone. It's James again. And today I want to talk about a comment that was left on my last video from one of my subscribers. Gwendolyn. And the comment she made really says a lot in my opinion. And it's worth to talk about and look at. Gwendolyn wrote. The worst forms of abuse that I have encountered were very subtle, in the form of snide comments to demean while others laugh, claiming it was a joke. I notice that they never joke in a way that elevates and makes us feel loved. And I will say. This comment is very true. This is why in my opinion having true friends is really rare. And finding that special someone is though doable. It's very rare as well. Rare like a ruby. Because even though it's okay to joke around. As for instance. I have a pretty good sense of humor. I can joke with others and take a joke about myself as well. But there's that point where you feel it crosses the line. And you know it crosses the line. Where they say something that is subtle and snide. As Gwendolyn put it. And you know it was done on purpose to hurt you. Here's the facts. Not everyone that does this is a narcissist. But they do it for narcissistic reasons. Usually in most instances. It's because they are jealous of something you possess. Regardless if it's external or internal. And they want to knock you down a notch. They don't want you to realize the gift you have inside or outside. So you second guess yourself. So you shell up. And they can take center stage. And you won't get out there in life and pursue your dreams and goals. Now narcissists do this for pretty much the same reasons. But the narcissist plans this out more times than not. Yes. They do it spontaneously too. But they also are just looking and waiting for instances they can hurt you so they can have some control over your self-esteem and your life. And to a narcissist and a non-narcissist alike. They in all honestly think you're a pushover. Or in their mind they think you're a punk. If you take this type of subtle abuse and keep on coming back expecting a friendship. This can happen even if you've been so-called friends for many years and this all of a sudden rears its head. Now. If you've been friends for a long time. And this never happened before. And it comes about. You can stop the conversation and let the person know to slow up a bit on what they are saying or doing. Now. If you can't do this. Or you feel like it's a weird spot to say such a thing. Don't beat yourself up. Because that's the trick of the narcissist. And to a degree of the non-narcissist alike. No matter if it's planned or spontaneous. Because even if it's spontaneous. Some people are smart enough to say their rude comments so they can hide behind it being a joke. So if you snap back. Or if you tell them to slow up. You may come across as the jerk. Or you're being overly emotional. Your reaction to such things can go hand in hand with the smear campaign. The narcissist will oftentimes talk about you to their so-called friends they haven't dropped their mask with. Friends that only know their good side. And or co-workers. They will say how awesome you are. But throw in how you are moody. Or you have a temper. Or little things here and there that might make it seem like you really aren't such a good person after all. Despite their high praise. Then they will say and do certain things that will hopefully make you make a face at them. Or make a comment back. All the while they sit there like the innocent one that has a good sense of humor. And you don't. So sometimes. If this is a so-called friend. Or co-worker. Or even someone you're dating. I would do whatever you have to do to separate yourself from this person. And if you have to see this person because of work. Be professional. You don't have to say how you were upset with them. Just be too busy to hang out with them. If you're dating them. Just see it as they just do do tested themselves for you. They just showed you who they are. Be happy and thankful. And again with this new person you're dating. Be too busy to hang out with them. Set boundaries. And then politely dump them. Let them know that you just don't have time for a relationship. That they are nice and you hope they find someone nice that will appreciate them. 
and move on your safe and merry way. Because telling themselves about themselves won't make them change. It will only prompt them to take revenge on you. For you letting them know you know what and who they are. And also for dumping them. But if you don't have time for them, sure they might try to do the but why? But why? Thing. But eventually they will give up and move on to one of their other victims. They more than likely were seeing when they were seeing you. The key is. Don't be the punk they think you are for accepting such treatment. And not accepting this treatment. Doesn't mean you have to confront them. Now if you've been friends a long long time. And they've never done this before. If the timing is right. Talk to them about it. If the timing isn't right. Wait a day or two and talk to them about it when you both are alone and can have a private conversation. Now how they react to what you say to them should tell you a lot. If they act like you're making stuff up. Or you're blowing things out of proportion. Then maybe that season of a friendship has ended. Now. For certain people like that. Where you think they just might not have gotten it. Don't feel like you need to stress about it and stress things to them. But if you continue to have any kind of friendship with this person, file the last interaction away in your mind. So when it happens again, you can make no more excuses for this person and drift away from them. I've learned long ago. Getting into a big thing over someone's stupid actions to me does no good. Now I'm not perfect by any means. And I too have said stupid things I regret. But majority of the times. Being able to put myself in that person's shoes. I can see on their face when I may have stepped across the line. I can see it in their body language. Because to me it's not about just being empathic. It's about being a growing and maturing adult. And if I see such a look on someone's face. That's when I will say. Hey man. I'm sorry if I crossed the line on that one. It won't happen again. And I make sure it doesn't happen again. Why? Because if I consider that person to be a friend. I understand that person is a person just like me. And that person has value. As I have value. And joking around should make you feel like a part of a group. Not like a pile of crap. No one should feel drained leaving an interaction with their friends. Or someone they are dating. You should feel happy and energized. And in between the joking around. There should be talk like. No but serious. That's really cool you're working on that project. I hope all goes well. You have to keep me posted on what you're doing because I hope you make it man. But sadly this is rare. And this is why friendships are rare. We live in this world of narcissism. And narcissistic abuse as I've said before. And it's only getting worse. Dog eat dog world. Where your best friend will try to take the person you're dating from you. Or the person you're married to. And sabotage your dreams and goals. And they do it just so you can't have it. Isn't that sick? What friend doesn't want to see another friend happy? Whenever I had a friend that had someone they were dating that they liked. I was always legitimately happy for them. As many of you listening probably have been with people you called a friend. But you have to ask yourself. Were they like that with you? Or was the first thing they were trying to do was scam behind your back to get this person for themselves? Not to have a relationship with them. But to make it so you couldn't be happy. Now if they were able to succeed in such a thing. Actually they did you a favor. You just got rid of a good for nothing friend and a bad life partner. And even this flirting can be very subtle as well. Don't react to it if you realize they are a scumbag. Don't give them your energy. Don't feed them your supply. But instead, just be too busy to spend any more time with them. And eventually this vampire of a so-called friend will leave you alone. You see, the narcissist, and those like the narcissist have turned subtle put-downs into an undetectable art form. They love it. 
They love how they can manipulate situations and manipulate you with simple words. Now again if this person isn't empathic enough to see and know what they just said or did is hurtful. You don't need that kind of reptile in your life. They just do do tested themselves for you. And I think I will be making another video about this subject. You know how I made videos about the narcissist do do test. Well what you need to do is see the narcissist do do test as them really do do testing themselves for you. If a friend or co-worker or dating partner is acting in such a way. They just did all the testing that will ever need to be done on themselves. Just file it away in your mind. And no. It's over. I'm done here. Smile. Be polite. And know when they call you next week to hang out you will be too busy. The problem is we've been conditioned to take this abuse. And keep on coming back for more. Hoping for better results. And sometimes we get them. But it's just part of the sweet mean cycle. The narcissist knows when they overreached. So they will throw us a bone of fake kindness and we go for it. Because that's what we've been trained to do. By our narcissist parent or parents. Many of us anyways. And when the narcissist throws us this fake bone of kindness. And we go for it. They know. They know our history without us even telling them. Here's something to think about. Successful people have no time for this kind of garbage. They have no time. They move on quickly. Oh. Okay. You're being nasty and negative to me. I have no time for that. I have things to do. And goals to accomplish. And I can't be around people like you that want to bring me down. Now of course there's no need to tell them that. Because chances are. They won't change. Especially if they are a narcissist. We know they can't change. This is a pattern for these people. They love bomb the heck out of you. Then rip the rug out from under you. Either overtly with a big and sudden blowout fight for no apparent reason. Or with subtle jabs. Digs. And jokes. This is why loving yourself is so important. Because. When you love yourself. You know. You know you're worth more than put downs and to be the butt of someone's jokes. You are worth success. Did you hear me? You are worth success. And let the haters hate. Let them find someone else to put down. You have found your power. And you have found your strength. And you have found self-love. And there's no more time for that negative mess. With that being said. Having this happen your entire life can and does do damage. And it can be hard to just change this way about you and how you react to it. It takes practice. This is where talking about it. And commenting about it is important. That's why I want to thank Gwendolyn for the comment. Comments like this spark talk. And debate and others to think about their experiences. And they can say. Oh wow. I'm not alone. And then they can learn some skills on how to overcome such situations. And become better versions of themselves. And before you know it these small successes turn into bigger successes. And so on and so forth. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. So keep the comments and thoughts coming. Because you might find it helpful for yourself to go through the entire process of understanding. Along with helping someone else out too. Well that's all I have for now. I hope everyone's day was well and blessed. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.